untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black combo control deck titled Agonizing Abyss. It is a deck that we've covered in the past, but it did get a lot of new additions with Zendikar Rising, so it seemed worth revisiting. And the two card combo in the deck is Underworld Dreams plus Peer into the Abyss. Underworld Dreams a 3 mana enchantment, saying whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals 1 damage to that player, so it could eventually win the game by itself, especially if we draw multiple copies, but we can speed up the process significantly if we play Peer into the Abyss targeting the opponent, because then target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half their life rounded up each time. So let's say that by the time we play Peer into the Abyss, the opponent has 40 or maybe 45 cards remaining in their library, so they end up drawing 20 cards and losing, if they start at 20, about 10 life. And then we also get 20 Underworld Dreams triggers, so the opponent will definitely die if we can pull that off. So it's a very simple two card combo, and to make sure we can pull it off we've got plenty of removal, hand disruption and a bit of ramp to try and assemble those two cards. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at one mana, a nice new addition with Blood Chief's Thirst, one mana removal spell for creatures with converted mana cost two or less, and we can also kick it for four mana total to destroy any creature or or planeswalker. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Maze Mind Tome, giving us that card selection with the Scry 1, eventually gains a bit of life, so that's nice against aggro, and can also use it to draw extra cards, so this is very important to help us hit our land drops early on, and eventually assemble the 2 card combo. Then we've got Heartless Act as a 2 mana removal spell to complement Blood Chief's Thirst as cheap interaction, and the full playset of Agonizing Remorse to take away a card from the opponent's hand or potentially graveyard if we need to exile an escape creature, so this is nice against any control decks where they might have counter spells to stop our two card combo. Then at 3 mana we've got more hand disruption with Pelaka Predation, which we can also play as a tap land. And the beauty of some of these dual faced cards is that the deck is pretty mana hungry, we want to get up to 7 mana for Peer into the Abyss, but if we do happen to flood out we still have additional spells with Pelaka Predation and Tagra Mauling, so that all fits into the deck perfectly. And then we also have two copies of Grim Tutor, not a great card by itself, but it does give the deck additional consistency by helping us find Underworld Dreams if we already have Peer into the Abyss, or Peer into the Abyss if we already have Underworld Dreams, and occasionally also finds additional interaction or just a land if we need to find additional land drops, in which case we can just fetch up a Castle Lochthwain to potentially draw more cards with in the late game. Then at 4 mana we've got our Sweeper of Choice with Extinction Event, and then two copies of Hagar Mauling which can kill a creature or can be played as a land, and then Solemn Simulacrum gives us a ramp by searching up a basic land when it enters a battlefield, gives us a chum blocker, and when it dies, lets us draw an additional card as well. And then of course the full playset of Peer into the Abyss. Sometimes if we don't have Underworld Dreams and draw multiple copies of Peer, it is fine to just target ourselves with Peer into the Abyss and draw a whole bunch of cards, as long as we make sure we don't die on the backswing. And then the mana base, 20 basic swamps and 4 copies of Castle Lochthwain, which is especially useful if we have Underworld Dreams and are just looking for Peer into the Abyss. If we have Peer into the Abyss stuck in our hand, then it does become pretty painful to activate Castle. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, we've got 2 lands, 1 Underworld Dreams and plenty of interaction. So I don't love this, don't have a Maze Mind Tome to keep hitting our land drops, but we are on the draw. So we're a bit more likely to hit our land drops here. And then we've got all the interaction we need to stay alive for a while. And I think I'm gonna let them keep the goose, just play this Predation tapped. And then turn to Remorse, turn 3 Dreams, unless we need to Thirst. Trail of Crumbs, or opponent on a blue-green food deck it looks like. So they've got the late game covered with Trail of Crumbs. Just gotta make sure they uh, don't have any interaction for our two card combo. Now, Deer Kraken, Great Henge, Wicked Wolf. So, Wicked Wolf, we can still exile with Extinction Events. Uh, same goes for Not Deer Kraken, really. And they don't have double blue unless they use the Goose. So, I kind of like taking Great Henge, which is a little bit more difficult for us to interact with. And then I'm kind of hoping they run out one of their creatures, so we can uh, deal with it with Extinction Events. Finds an island, so they're probably gonna run out Nadir Kraken. 
and then Extinction Event on Odd will deal with Goose and Kraken. And for now we'll just play an Underworld Dreams. So the Dreams also punishes any additional card draw which would help grow Nadir Kraken, although Trail of Crumbs doesn't count as actual card draw, so it doesn't trigger Underworld Dreams or Kraken. Probably see the Goose make an extra food token on the way out. And yeah, then we're just looking for Peer into the Abyss. Or a way to generate some extra cards. Or maybe a tutor to search it up. So if they play Wicked Wolf, I can Extinction Event and deal with both the Kraken token, which has an even converted mana cost of zero, and the wolf. Their opponent's gonna pass. Well, let's have a look with Remorse. Double Wicked Wolf, take one. And then... Do I play Hagra Mauling or keep it? Probably just play it out as a land. We do eventually need to get up to seven, and I've got removal in hand, so I'm not too worried about running out. But yeah, the Trail of Crumbs, which landed turn two before we could Agonize and Remorse it, is keeping the opponent in the game here. Finds a Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, a good target for Thirst. Although they might run out both Kinnon and Wolf, in which case the second Extinction Event on Even is looking quite good. There's Kinnon and the Wolf. All right, so this will be a clean three for one. And then it's just waiting for Peer into the Abyss. Alright, more removal in hand. And Trail of Crumbs finds another Kinnon. Gazandu Mammoth plus Kinnon. So I think I just untap and then play Thirst and then play Kicked Thirst and keep the Instant Speed Heartless Act in hand. So we've got 7 mana, so yeah, we're just one good top deck away from winning. Maze Mind Tome would also be great. And as we mentioned, Tudor can also search up Abyss. And doesn't seem like her opponent has any counter spells or ways to deal with Underworld Dreams. Right, second Dreams will speed up our alternate win condition here. Right, they do have Brazen Borrower to bounce Dreams. You know, if they held on to the Brazen Borrower, that could have been a little problematic if they would have bounced dreams in response to peer into the abyss but they do feel pressured into just running out the uh, brazen borrower to start applying a bit of pressure so that's totally understandable we are out of removal now it's probably no harm in keeping land in hand although yeah I guess I could see a situation where we draw maze mind tome activate it and then need to have enough mana to play appear into the abyss if we draw into it.
Great Henge, alright. So any future creatures are gonna be problematic. Another extinction event. So yeah, between Maze Mind Tome, Peer into the Abyss and Tutor, we've got about 10 draws that we're hoping for. Ooh, Kyurabas the Sea God. Alright, luckily we found it just in time here. Thirty-six Underworld Dreams triggers on the stack. That should just about do it. They can bounce one, but the triggers are already happening, so that doesn't really do much. As your opponent's about to find out. And the satisfying machine gun of Underworld Dreams to win the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Double Maze Mind Tome to find the missing pieces and hit our land drops. And a bit of interaction in case we need to deal with early creatures. Let's see what our opponent is up to. Turn one planes. A third Maze Mind Tome. So we can aggressively scry with at least one of them. Since we've got no shortage of Maze Mind Tomes. Black White. And a Sleeper Dart, so probably a Doom Foretold deck. Which could be tough, since they can potentially remove Underworld Dreams once it's in play. Yeah, I'll take a Remorse, since that's a way for us to maybe take away a Doom Foretold. And yeah, there it is. Doom Foretold, Extinction Event, their own Maze Mind Tome. And Ugin. Ugin also a way for the point to potentially get rid of Underworld Dreams, but for now we'll take the Doom Foretold. And then we can scry end of turn once again. Try and hit land number four. That's good. So we'll play an extra tome and then draw with the other one. One play solemn. That'll ram them towards Ugin, which could be a problem here. Although we have time to potentially find another hand disruption spell. Opponent's also playing blue, so it's Asper. Doom foretold. Another remorse is good. Do I want to scry? Yeah, I guess I do want to find a land here. And then we can put an upkeep stop. Did find castle. Castle's great. So we'll just take our draw step, and then probably Remorse draw card this turn. And take away Ugin. Seems fine. Another Maze Mind Tome. Opponent plays Maze Mind Tome. They do have a Crawling Barons, which we can't really interact with, since it doesn't die to Heartless Act once it picks up more than three counters, but I guess we could potentially kill it if they attack with it as a 2-2. But I don't feel really pressured into killing the Simulacrum yet. And I guess we'll draw with the lower counter Maze Mind Tome here which could be relevant if my opponent finds a Doom Foretold. And then... I guess we want to scry for lands again. Don't need Extinction Events. And then I'll scry an upkeep. And Swamp is fine. Alright, so now we just need Underworld Dreams, and we'll be good. Probably no real reason to draw now with Tome. Four, five, six, even if they have another Ugin in hand, I can wait another turn to take it away. On the off chance that I drew into another Agonizing Remorse.
Alright, a second tomb. And a golden egg. Alright, so we'll draw and then go digging for that Underworld Dreams. Predation could also be good. And then we've got six mana right now. This could also be a game where we want to peer into the abyss ourselves to just draw a ton of cards, which I don't actually hate. And in that case, I might want to scry with Tome to find an untapped land 7. Let's see what happens if we scry here. Alright, there is a swamp, so I could go for it. I will need to find a second peer into the abyss, obviously. But I'll be at 9. I can gain 4 afterwards by scrying, so I'm not really at risk of dying. Alternatively, I can just cast Predation, make sure they can't play Ugin next turn. But I'll probably draw into an answer for Ugin. So I think I'll go for it. Target myself. And then I just need to keep Underworld Dreams peer into the Abyss. And then we can discard a bunch of lands here. So a lot of cards in hand. I'm going to have to discard to hand size a bunch. So Heartless Act, Extinction Event, Placa Predation, Hagra Mauling, Swamp, Castle, Simulacrum, Mauling. We'll try and keep two Dreams. Grim Tutor can go. Keep two Peer into the Abyss. Keep a Thirst. Probably no need the third Peer into the Abyss. Perdition can go. Simulacrum can go. Swamp, Swamp. And then I need to discard a few more. Let's get rid of an extra Agonizing Remorse, maybe. So we kept two lands, two dreams, two abyss, and a thirst. Possible that the extra swamp could have just been Remorse, just to double check for an Ugin. But I think this is fine. And being able to gain four after losing half our life totals, quite nice too. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I can scry here, but there's nothing specific I'm looking for. So I'll just play Dreams. And pass. I don't want to play the second Dreams, otherwise Ugin could exile both at the same time. Field of Ruin, that's fine. Take two down to five. Alright, they did have Ugin, unfortunately. Alright, that's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. It's gonna minus three, so it gets rid of my dreams. And then we'll draw. And draw again. And then I don't want to sacrifice Tome yet, because that way I have something to sacrifice to a Doom Foretold instead. So we'll play Kicked Thirst. Kill Ugin. Play second dreams and yeah, hope they can get rid of the second copy. Otherwise we could be in trouble. It's 
It's also possible I should have just held on to the dreams, because next turn I would have had enough mana to play dreams and peer in the same turn, so we would not have exposed dreams to another Ugin. Although, by keeping dreams in hand, we do expose it to potential hand disruption, which the opponent could also have. And we've already dealt with double Ugin, not sure if they've got more than two. Doom foretold. Alright, that's fine. So if they were to find hand disruption, we've got double peer into the abyss, so that's fine. And their opponent explodes, they know what's incoming next turn, and they couldn't find another answer in time. So yeah, sometimes targeting yourself with peer into the abyss just to get a ton of extra resources in these slower matchups is a totally valid strategy as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with not an amazing hand, double peer is a little clunky, four lands and an extinction event, so this one's close. I think I'm gonna keep it. We would much rather have double Underworld Dreams instead of Peer into the Abyss, because then we can empty our hand and start activating Castle much sooner. Whereas now, Castle's gonna be painful if we have two 7-drops stuck in hand. But being on the play means that we shouldn't be too far behind by the time we cast Extinction Events, and Maze Mind Tome is an excellent draw. So now we can make sure we keep hitting our land drops and find an Underworld Dreams eventually. Opponent on Gruul Aggro. Take one. So for now I guess the priority is finding some cheap interaction. Probably again bottom the swamp. And then I think I'll just take my draw step and then I'll just draw with the tome if I don't find anything. And then hopefully they play another even costed creature so extinction event lines up. And then I guess I might as well draw now in case we find a blood chief's thirst. Alright, so we've got lands until six here, so don't need to prioritize scrying them to the top. Fable Passage means 5 damage from the brush fire. But it does look like they might play another 2 mana card here. Which bodes well for extinction events. Unless they're just keeping up Stomp from Bonecrusher Giants, which seems to be the case. Alright, I'm gonna scry just because I need to find Underworld Dreams as soon as possible. Second Tome is tempting, but I'm probably gonna need more interaction as well, besides this one extinction event. Alright, we found another Tome, so... I'm expecting a stomp on my face end of turn. Not sure how much I need to prioritize killing Brushfire. They've already used Fable Passage, they could have another one. But otherwise, a Brushfire isn't the largest threat. So I could also see just playing another Tome and drawing instead. And then hoping for a 2 for 1 with Extinction Events. And then we'll have a bit of life gain with a Tome reaching for counters. Alright, Skyclave Pickaxe. Yeah, if they have another Fabled Passage this could hurt. And they do. So that's 9 damage. And we still assume they have a Stomp in hand. Still nothing. We'll draw. And then upkeep. Probably gonna scry here. And then we've got all the lands we need, so just removal and Underworld Dreams is what we need. And then do I scry again? I think I do. Remorse, I think we can bottom since if a bunch of cards in hand, so taking away one doesn't seem super relevant. And there's a Dreams, alright. So, Extinction Event on Even. Next turn we can Dreams. And then turn 7, Peer into the Abyss. Opponent hasn't presented any additional creatures. Although Wayward Guide Beast is gonna attack right away. So we'll take 4. 
And then... Yeah, I think I'm scrying to try and find some cheap removal. Bottom Swamp. Another extinction event, so... Yeah, if we want to go for the win... I would just play Dreams, hope they don't kill me, go to 1, and then next turn Peer into the Abyss for lethal. If we think they have a Stomp in hand, I would be dead to just them playing a land, hitting me for 4 and burning me for 2. So I might have to just Extinction Event here instead, and then next turn we get to gain 4 life, we can maybe play Dreams draw, or just cry and look for more removal, and then take it a turn slower, which seems a little safer. So we'll see how this works out. It's going to be a Lotus Cobra. Which gives him the mana to equip Axe. Alright, could have been worse. So now I have to decide if I want to Scry or Draw. I'm going to gain 4 regardless. So I think Scry is fine, since we don't really need additional resources, we just need to find specific ones. Heartless Act or Thirst would be the cards I'm looking for here. Another Dreams doesn't seem necessary. I don't expect them to have any disenchants, although it's not impossible. Uh, Psalm Simulacrum. So yeah, that gives us an extra Chum Blocker, which might be everything we need to stay alive for an extra turn. Alright, so let's see if we can survive with a Chum Blocker and 9 life. Another Guide Beast, that one tramples. Alright, I get to Chump Cobra. And an Ember Cleave. Yep. Unfortunately, that'll do it. And we were one card away from a Heartless Act, which would have done it. Alright, that's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Facing a Yurion deck, so Remorse is going to be useful at maybe taking away a key interactive spell, whether it's a counter spell or maybe Skyclave Apparition, which could exile my Underworld Dreams. Uh, I think I still play Tome first. And then next turn we can still potentially take Apparition. Although they seem to be just on blue-black control. So if they're on blue-black, I don't think I scry with them and instead try and get as much card advantage as possible. And then maybe just hard cast Predation this turn and next turn I get to Remorse and draw a card. This might get countered by a Jory Disruption, which would be a reason to just Remorse with one mana floating. They've already played one tapped. Alright, that resolves. Shadow's Verdict, we don't care about at all. Double Shark, Typhoon, Omen, Simulacrum. So I probably just take Simulacrum. And then we can take it slow. They don't have a ton of pressure here. But they might find some interaction with Omen. Which we then need to take away with Remorse. Keeps both cards on top. Another tome. So lots of remorse. See what's up. And then I might just play another tome. More removal, which we don't care about. Take a Shark Typhoon. Yeah, I think just resolving a second Tome and then we can just start drawing cards. And we don't need to worry about counter spells as much as we'll be able to gain a ton of card advantage. And then lands are good draws. Underworld Dreams, of course. Another card we want. More hand disruption.
So we'll draw. And then probably can draw end of turn since there's no one mana card I need to draw right now. Grim Tutor can find Underworld Dreams, so I could do that right now and potentially just win the game next turn. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. Opponent's likely just cycling a Shark Typhoon for three. Find Underworld Dreams. That resolved. So, could also just wait until we have another hand disruption spell to double check that they don't have any way to mess up our two card combo here. Wouldn't want them to have a way to bounce my dreams in response to the appear into the abyss. But dreams itself is also doing a decent job of applying a bit of pressure. Right, just hard cast Shark Typhoon, so that makes it easy. And there we go. We were prepared to play long game with double Maze Mind Tome, but our opponent felt pressured into getting that Shark Typhoon in play, which, to be honest, would have been good if we didn't have the two card combo in a long, grindy control matchup, since there's no real way for a mono black deck to destroy it unless we have the uh, two mana disenchant in our deck, which we don't. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, facing Lures of the Dream Den as companion. Second pier, not as great. So the plan here, maybe turn to Remorse, turn three, play Tome, turn four, Simulacrum. Our opponent could be on a black Sacrifice deck, or just blue-black Rogues, I guess. Blue Black Rogues confirmed, missing blue mana. And double Wind Robber, Drown, double into the story in hand. I probably just take the Drown. And hope they keep missing their blue mana. Right, another black source means access to Lurus. And we'll play Tome and a tapped Mauling here. Next turn we can play Solemn, which will help us ramp. And we'll scry to look for Underworld Dreams. Uh, Swamp is probably still okay, although I do have double Simulacrum. I guess I would need one more land to get up to seven. Yeah, I guess I'll keep it. And this does a good job of blocking the opponent's attacks. We've got three cards in graveyard, so pretty far from the eight required. So our opponent does nothing. Grim Tutor, yeah, that finds my uh, missing piece here, so seems good. Although, for now, we'll just play another Simulacrum, I think. Or do I? I guess never mind. I can tutor, play Dreams, and if I top deck a land, we can just win. And I've got two scries with Tome to find it. Well, opponent was missing blue mana, which is unfortunate. But beating rogues always feels nice. So I've got four cards in graveyard. Yeah, I mean, I'll block. They can replay to mill for two, but I don't really care. And then we'll scry. And upkeep scry again, see if we can find a land. And we can. And that should be game. Opponent gets to have their blue mana at long last. Sweet. 
Well, maybe not the most uh, competitive match here for our last one, but to be honest, we did take away their counter spells, so they wouldn't have had much interaction unless they managed to resolve an into the story to find more counter spells, and then we should have been able to survive long enough to eventually pull it off. So yeah, overall, this mono black Underworld Dream Spear into the Abyss deck might not be the most competitive deck out there, but can definitely hold its own. The main kind of problem card that got introduced in Zendikar Rising, I would say, is the Skyclave Apparition, which gives a lot of decks a main deck answer to your Underworld Dreams, which they otherwise wouldn't have. So that's one potential concern. But otherwise, you know, you've got plenty of hand disruption to take away problematic cards and plenty of removal to stay alive long enough to pull off the combo. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.